Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and the best defense, Namor. All right, it doesn't really matter if you read this one or the Hulk one first. Uh, for, the, for the most part, they're both whatever. But uh, this one definitely does lead into the next one. <laughs> the other one is just kind of there. Uh, both good, both really good. So let's get into who made this. Uh, Chip Zdarsky as the writer. Carlos Magno is the artist. Ian Herring is the color artist. VCs Travis Lanham is the letterer. The cover is done by Ron Garvey and Richard Eisenhoff. And there's some variant covers. There's a lot of variant covers. Uh, I do have to say the Scott, Scott a Young one is pretty cool. <laughs> anyway. Um, oh, Carlos Lau did the graphic design. Sweet. So, um, this this isn't the, the best work I've ever seen. There's a lot of things that let's see, how do I put this? Certain things were meant to happen in the comic book. It's, you know what? Yeah, I'll put it this way. I could see the outline was done for this comic book, but as far as connecting the dots, it was more of a connect the dots piece of paper as opposed to writing the connection of the dots. Um, we, we, Namor went from point A to point B to point C and then to, to point D, which was coincidentally in space. And, um, which will bring us to the next point, but that point E is in the nether and we're not going to actually see that, uh, not for another month or two. Anyway, um, so this, the, the comic book felt like there wasn't a whole lot of thought put into getting Namor from here to there to there. It's like, okay, Namor has to get there. Think of a good reason. Think of an excuse, not, not think of a reason. Think of an excuse. And then, okay, here's the excuse. Boom. He goes. Yeah. <laughs> At the same time, Namor is written more Namor than I've seen him written in a really long time. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people have always said, anytime I'm like, oh yeah, I really like Namor. He's a great character, blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, he's not really that tough. Whoa. Namor is ridiculously tough. Namor is like, yeah, dude, Namor is one of the strongest characters in the Marvel Universe. Well, yeah, but, but he's, well, I don't know. No, dude, he's one of the toughest SOBs there is, and that's all there is to it. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't take a hit as much as well as he can give a hit, but dude, he can punch Thor or the Hulk and knock him on their butt and say, come on, get back up. Once he gets hit, that's a little bit different. He's not exactly a glass cannon, but dude, Namor hits like a son of a gun. <laughs> anyway, um... Namor really gets, uh, I don't know, he gets himself into a fight, but again, he does it very, very Namor-ish, which is a good thing. Namor wants to try and recruit the, uh, the Vodani, which is a, a lost, uh, it's a lost Atlantean tribe. They don't consider themselves Atlantean anymore, but he wants to welcome them back in their fold. Why? Because Namor is scared. At the end of the day, Namor is scared, okay? But the people, the people of Atlantis, his advisors, his counselors, they're like, oh, we can't trust them. They're terrible people. They're backstabbers. You can't trust them. Why would they say that? Because they're scared. So he goes to the Vidani. Hey, man, we need your help. But they're like, yeah, we can't really do that. Uh, we don't really want to help you out. Why? Well, because they're scared. At the end of the day, the overall, I don't know if this was the intent of the comic book. If it was, it was definitely a very subtle thing. But I derived a lot of racism in this. I derived a lot of uh, mistrust and, oh no, we can trust us. We're good people, but those are not good people. Everybody, like even Namor is saying that, oh, I'm half land dweller, but he's in, in a way, he's one of those self-haters in that regard. Meanwhile, it's funny because Namor, king of Atlantis, talking about we've got to fight back against these uh, land dwellers and these mouth breathers, these, you know, air breathers, and we've got to fight against the humans. But when he's got to make a simile, when, he, when he's got to compare something to explain something to one of the Vodani, what's the likeness that he uses? A lighthouse, which is interesting. He could have used any, he could use like the angler fish or any of the, the fish that bring their own light in order to see deep down in like, you know, the Marianas and, and areas like that. He could have mentioned any of those kinds of fish that have the bioluminescence, but no, he mentioned a lighthouse. Now, it worked with the story really well, but at the end of the day, that could have been used with just a little bit more work with any of the other fish that produce their own light, but Namor didn't do that. 
Why? He's more human than he wants to admit. This comic book was done very well as far as the Namor aspect. Getting this character right. Who? Damn. Hot damn. Really good. But everything that had, like, a king of the Vodani, the king of the Vodani, a king of a mighty um, uh, exiled race was killed here. And it seems like it's just going to go nowhere. Oh, God, I would love for this to come back. I would love to be able to come back to this story. But I don't know if we will. You know, so it'd be cool if we did. We got a, a cool new character, the new queen. She's gonna, she's the princess. She's gonna be the new queen of the Vodani. You'd imagine if the hierarchical system uh, w works the exact same way, but uh, the same way as Atlantis, I should say. But yeah, this was again, this was literally just place to place to place to place. We need excuses to get Namor from here to here to here. But at the end of the day, it was more about the Namor aspect than anything else. So. It's sad to see that the story was more of a backdrop as opposed to seeing who Namor is. But since we only had one issue to do that, like this should have been, a, you know, at least two issues, maybe three. You know, it is what it is. Marvel was like, yeah, we need one issue of each of the characters to get to, you know, for whatever reason, a reason for them to get to where they're going. But Chip, he decided to make a story that should have been three issues. And that's... It's always a shame. The same thing I hear from so many writers for Marvel and for DC and things like that. It's like, yeah, it's great playing in the sandbox. You know, you, you get to play with all these characters you grew up with. You know, it's awesome. But again, it is a sandbox. And at the end of the day, it is someone else's sandbox. And when the sun goes down, you got to go home. So you got to do what the bosses tell you to do. And that's kind of a shame. It really is. Because this would have been a much better story if it had more breathing space. If we would have had three issues to tell the story. You know, maybe four issues, whatever it is. But whatever, it is what it is. As far as the characterization of Namor, though, oh, really solid. Really solid, man. Like, there's the part in here where Namor is betrayed. And he turns around and he kills at least one of the people there. And meanwhile, he's yelling at the king... I just wanted to do this, and I just want to do that. And you have to be able to see what I'm saying, how we can do such a... Whoa, dude. Whoa, 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 whoa. You just straight up killed one of their guys. If, if this is your side and my side, I don't care if you got 10 guys on your side, I got 10 guys on my side. You kill one of my peeps, that ends the conversation right there. Oh, I betrayed you, I did this, I did whatever. I get it. But even if I'm the bad guy in this situation, if you've killed one of my peeps... The conversation is over. You need to understand that. You just took a route, very similar to the route that I guess I was taking, but you need to stop talking. You need to, because all that is, is a balloon filled with air, and you're just deflating the balloon. And however you're deflating the balloon, it's going to make a silly sound. You're going to stretch it if you're going to just let it go, whatever. It's going to make a silly sound. But the thing about deflating balloons is, eventually, it's deflated. There's only one place for the air to go. There's only but so much air in the balloon. And eventually it will be deflated. And you keep yelling and screaming and getting that mad on. That's the biggest problem that Namor has always had since his inception, pretty much. Is him constantly ruminating quite loudly <laughs> while he's doing the things he's doing. Whether it's a noble act or an ignoble act. That's what we've constantly seen with Namor. That's one of the main reasons why I say Namor was presented so expertly in this comic book. Um, yeah, I just wish that the rest of the story was, you know, got that similar respect because this opens up a whole new world. This comic book could have potentially opened up a whole new world. And maybe that's exactly what it is. Maybe, you know, instead of it being a doorway, a big portal, maybe it's a, a different kind of portal. Maybe it's like a cat door. You know what I'm saying? That little tiny one where only the cats could go through, but you could look through. But later on, we'll revisit it. <laughs> anyway, guys, for now, I did like this comic book. All right, uh, moving on. Professor Bill, Comic Book University, class dismissed.